Well, it's Chords and Coffee, and today we're coming to you from the PalinMusic.com warehouse. Got a very special guest, my friend, Taj Ferrant. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I guess it was back in August that we did sort of a rig rundown, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And I got to meet you and your wonderful family, and you can't see this behind the camera, but there's a bunch of great folks here. And um, came into the store, you were in town doing a show. Yeah. And we said we ought to do a Chords and Coffee lesson. So here we are, and I'm gonna brag on you just a little bit, okay? So Taj has the number one, actually two, number one blues singles in the entire world. Is that right? Yes, that is true. Thank you. Right? And you're 14, right? Yes. And you've got a great head on your shoulders. Thank you. A great head of hair, too. Congratulations oh, no, on that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's been there a long time. <laughs> long time to make it. So, um, Taj today is actually going to teach us one of those singles. And if we have time, we'll just see where the conversation goes. Yeah. Uh, maybe the other one, too. But um, So, if you're watching this for the first time and you, for whatever reason, haven't discovered this amazing talent and great human being, I would encourage you... Go find Taj. He's easy to find. You're all over YouTube, all over Instagram, all over Facebook, and start following this amazing guitar player and amazing family, too. Uh, so, when I hear you play, I hear there's some obvious Stevie Ray in there, there's some obvious Gary Moore. But one of the things I wanted to talk about today, and we've got our gear here, we've got our pedals, we've got our amps. Yes. One of the things I wanted to talk about today is you have, you are one of those. Um, amazing players that has tremendous chops. Thank you. You're welcome. And you also have great tone, and you also have really great feel, and that's kind of a feat in of itself, because a lot of us, and I can speak for myself too, I mean, I'm, I am uh, 47, I had to think about that for a second, which is, you know, a telltale sign, um, but I'm 47 <laughs> years old, and, you know, in my life, there was a part where I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna be the fastest guy. Right, and so I just started focusing on more chords and voicings and stuff like that. But I feel like you were really well-rounded. And so I just, just take a second, maybe talk about your influences, but also like, just do you have a practice regimen or are you just the kind of guy that just wakes up and, and plays every day? And I'll say one other thing too. I've seen you play live and you play stuff note for note. Like I can tell if yeah. you have studied Cliffs of Dover. Yeah. You've studied Hendrix, Yeah. right? And like, I, I'm not that guy. You know, I'm like, I hear it and go, okay, E minor, real fast. You know what I mean? Or that kind of thing, right? Yeah. And so I would just love to talk about, I mean, you're disciplined. You have a practice routine. What does that look like for you? Um, so, like, when I when I first started, I practiced, like, seven, de- seven hours a day. Like, I was just playing until, like, two in the morning. But, so um, not a lot of time for, like, Minecraft and, and Fortnite. No. Yeah. No, but um, <laughs> a lot of it was just, like, sitting there yeah. doing scales the whole time. Mm-hmm. Or like if I was um, just after dinner, I was like watching a show. I'd just be doing scales while I'm watching a show, mm-hmm. and it uh, built a lot, built up a lot of um, like, uh, built up a lot of. You the, might you might turn that up yeah, just so they can hear. They that built really up quick. a lot of the um, muscle memory in my like left and right hand to. Mm-hmm. So you can do it without like actually having to think of it because if you play it so many times, you can play it without thinking the whole time as well. Yeah, let's put a quick pause on that because that's a really good nugget. Um, a lot of times I think people don't like to practice, and I'm speaking for myself too. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times um, it may be, and just speaking for me, my natural predisposition to not like, I don't like being told what to do. You know what I mean? I got a little bit yeah. of rebellious, you know, just natural streak in me. But yeah. the way that your cheat code for that is, and here's the nugget, is that you're doing something like watching TV that is totally mindless, yeah. right? And you're playing, I guess, the same thing almost over and over and over again. Yeah, right? you'd just be playing the same. So like, like a three note major scale kind of thing. Yeah, so for those of you playing the home game and you got your, by the way, we are tuned to E flat. Yes. Yeah, and just out of curiosity, E flat, cause of Jimmy, cause of Stevie, or you like the way it feels better or? Um, it's definitely easier to play in, like, it's quicker with my, like, I play faster in that because, like, the strings are a bit lighter. Yeah, the, the string, because of less tension, the strings are a little slinkier against the fretboard. Yeah. And I uh, also, don't you also think a Strat or a single coil guitar just sounds better? They sound better. In E flat? In E flat, just a more. Yeah. 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 So when you're re watching this, hit pause right here. 
get your tuner out, tune to E flat. But that scale you were just doing, uh, three note per string. So like if we're doing G, and again, it's really G flat. That's but, a B ma uh, G major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got three, five, seven. And are you doing that with, um, yeah, so index, middle, pinky, yeah. right? And then three, five, seven again, right? So G, A, B, C, D, E, right? Three, five, seven. It's stretchy, but also your thumb is as if you were doing this, right? Yeah, it'd be like, my, my thumb always follows the first finger, kind of. That's a good way to put it. I hadn't thought about it. So his thumb and index finger are kind of glued together. And then four, five, seven, right? And then four, five, seven again. So four, five, seven on the D string, four, five, seven on the G string, and then five, seven, eight. And this time it's index, ring, and yeah. pinky on the B uh, and then on the high E. Yeah, that's something I worked on a lot was getting my using my pinky because now I have a lot more dexterity with it. Like I can actually use it without. Oh, no, wait, how big of a straight? What are you doing right there? Um, so from five to ten, five to twelve. Five to twelve. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> Somebody bring me some Vic Sass. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's it. so from five to twelve. Yeah, I can I do think... twelve from to a twenty-four, but I don't have twenty-four. I don't have twenty-four point. either, but yeah. twelve. I mean, I that's still pretty to stretchy. Yeah, yeah. Nice, twelve to twenty-one. Yeah. God, that's stretchy, brother. Yeah, yeah that's all. So, with that, when you're doing that, are you doing like like picking it once and kind of doing like a legato thing? No, I'd pro I'd go like. It helped if you were doing like triplets or like. This is all free, by the way. We're gonna get to cruise, so stay tuned here. Um, your right hand, your right. So my weakest link is definitely my rhythm hand, like my right hand, and that's like one of your strong suits. I want to circle back to that, but so your practice routine is you would sit with the guitar as often as pop as possible, even yeah. if watching TV. Yeah. Right. And then when you're approaching tunes, how do you do that? Do you break it up in little bits or? So something that actually helped me a lot, I'd fall asleep with the songs on repeat. Mm -hmm. So I'd go to sleep with like Spotify on and I'd just put the phone underneath my pillow. So I'd listen to the songs and it'd be, and I, because I've practiced all of those scales so much, I would be unconsciously like learning the songs without playing them. And it was weird how that worked because, like, I did it on the start of this tour as well. I was like, oh, I need to listen to this song. So I just put it on repeat for, like, a whole night and I, um, I could play the song by the next day, which was cool. That, that's pretty genius because that's literally how you learn language. Yeah. Like, if you're learning a foreign language, yeah. you, would just, you just have to, like, just immerse yourself in it. And so yeah. you're listening. It's like a theme song. Right. So you just keep it playing in your dreams. So you subconsciously be listening to the song over and over again. So when you come out with the Taj Ferentz uh, practice manual, it should be... Um, like fall asleep with Spotify. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, um, dream practicing. Yeah, dream practice. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, there was something I did with, with my right hand. I'd do like this thing. It was one of my first guitar teachers. He taught me this. And you'd just like get faster until that's come out. Yeah. Perfect on that. When you're when you're doing that, are you thinking down up, down up? Or are you thinking tiny circles? Or what are you thinking like as far as the motion itself? I'm I more can like I don't have perfect with the thing because like I know you're supposed to use your wrist, but I use my whole arm because it's quicker. But um, yeah. So is it coming like is it coming from your elbow? Yeah, a lot of it comes from my elbow because like I'm doing that, but just really small. How do you keep it from being tense? I've done it so many times, it just like... Gotcha, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of muscle wheeled up as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's a lot, of, a lot of practice went into how I can play now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. So, let's talk about Cruise. Yes. It's a great song. Uh, so, you've got two number one iTunes blues singles all over the world. You got an album coming out. You must be feeling really good about this album. When's the album ish coming out? I know it's a work um, in progress. It'll be like early next year, uh, maybe like January, February. So yeah. Yeah, you're pretty stoked about it. Yeah. Um, it's I've written probably 500 riffs, but I don't like them enough to put them in the song. Mm -hmm. There was like let's put them in the album. Like there's only 
two riffs that I've liked that I actually released, and it was Crossroads and uh, Grooves. Yeah. So there's like a vetting process. You don't yeah. just like write it and go, okay, let's go to the studio. Yeah, I came yeah. up with a really cool... Um, it was a really cool riff the other day. And I'm like, that'd be really cool to do a song with, but I don't know if it'd suit the um, the album because it's like more more rocky than it is than mm -hmm. blues. So yeah. Well, like, so Cruise is obviously very like okay. You've been you've been falling asleep to Gary Moore. Yeah, so right? a lot it, of Gary. Yeah, Moore. yeah, yeah. Which is great. And you know, if if you're getting started in guitar and guitar culture, and you're like Gary Moore. Like, what are, like, the quintessential Gary Moore songs, like, a person should check out? Um, still got the blues, 100%, just mm -hmm. for, like, his solos in that. But check out the live versions, because the live versions are always better than the album. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Parisian Walkways, I do that instrumental, mm -hmm. so I, I play his singing. It helps a lot with the phrasing. Mm -hmm. um, and... One thing I've noticed, like, with the whole phrasing part of my playing, if you listen to pop songs and try and learn the phrasing from pop songs on your guitar... Like the, the vocal? The vocal. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can learn a lot of phrasings from anything because they always... It's always from something else. And, like, yeah. Yeah, because a, a vocalist is going to do things... Like, for example, on Cruise, at the very beginning of this song, when I first heard it, to my ear, there was like this cool Jeff Beck moment that you did, but then when I saw you do it in person, it's this Bruce Lee vibrato karate chop thing here. Can you play that just for a second? Yeah, so, so the intro goes like this. That's the thing I'm talking about. Do that little... Ah, 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 thing. Hey guys. Um, so it's a so we're, so we're, we're uh, again E flat tuning, but we're, you're thinking of this as D minor. Yeah, right? D minor. And so we're we're doing a D minor thing, and you're doing this. But, but. so I am. Um, I used. It's something I learned from my very first guitar teacher before Dad started teaching me as well. He um always used to do this like he'd do like a triple bend or he'd go. <laughs> Who was your, what, what was your first guitar teacher's name? His name was Matt Piper. Matt Piper. You've yeah. done good with this one, sir. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. He, uh, he always used to do that thing, and I was like, oh, I'm going to steal that from you. He's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, like, that's where I got the... Uh... So, so you're, 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 bit, you're doing a, a... So we're on the G string, and we're bending up to a whole step, right? Or is, is it more than whole? No, it's a whole step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, I need to see it one more time because it's it's a. So it goes up and then. So oh. it's like. So you're. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to work on that for yeah, a little bit. That's a, a really of... cool move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it almost sounds like um, Eastern, you know, like, ah, you know, yeah. kind of stuff. Or I yeah. do like. But it sounds I like do, a guitar slide or a whammy bar. Or something. Yeah. Or yeah, if yeah. I do like a fast run, I'd go like, and I'd add it. So yeah. So what's funny about that is that that is such a cool technique. But I can imagine like when you were learning that, that's the kind of thing. Like if you're in the next room hearing someone practice that, it got so yeah. annoying. I'd be sitting there going. <laughs> But that's the way you do it. Yeah. So nugget number two is, so the first one was, uh, actually this is nugget number three. Yes. The first one was um, sort of watching TV with guitar. And we think about how many times we're staring at a screen at some point. There's plenty of guitar practice time yeah. inside there. Pick a scale, play it mindlessly over and over and over again. Fair? Yes. Nugget number two is have the songs that you want to play playing in the background as much as possible. No Even if you're like, cleaning your room or something, just put the song on really low even, even if you just barely can hear it, but it's still there, so. Yeah, like yeah. you're learning a language. If you want to learn to speak Portuguese. Listen to Portuguese. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then nugget number three is to, is to find as many vocal techniques 
Yes. And I would imagine if you're just getting started, you may go, I don't know how to, how am I going to do that? You know, well, even if it's just one little nugget like that, is it's it okay if we the, just refer to that as Bruce Lee Karate Chop yeah, Vibrato? We'll, we'll from call it Karate Chop Vibrato. Perfect. Yeah. Karate Chop. That's actually page three in your manual. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So, all right, let's get to cruise. So, the first, so we got that intro and there's some cool stuff happening there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and play the rest of that, if you don't mind, play the rest of that intro. And you turn up a little bit. Yeah, too, so yeah. it does that yeah. first. Like. So in the intro, are you actually playing um, like G7? Yeah. Yeah. And then later we switch to minor. Yeah. Very interesting. Very, very tricky. Yes. Yeah, see. Okay. So then we go to this chord. By the way, I always felt like this voicing for the minor nine was like the Hobbit voicing. Yeah. You know, Frodo of the Nine Fingers. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Middle Earth. Yeah, yeah. And so we got this. And show them that little thing you're doing there, because when I heard this, I thought you were going, but you're yeah. not. So yeah. in the start of it, it well, not in the start, through the whole thing, it's going, um. And then this is where people will get from confused and they think it goes. But it goes. Stretchy McStretcherton strikes again. Yeah, because I wanted this to ring out. I mean, you could kind of cheat with it and put on a, like a robot. Now don't give up, because this is stretchy. You can yes. do this. All right, so you got... So, all right, so first of all, here's this chord. It's D minor, so um, index finger on the fifth fret from the A all the way to the high E. You're going to build an A minor underneath it, sort of, because it's really A minor 9, right? But yes. stay with me. Index finger, A, all the way to high E. Middle finger is going to be on the B string of the sixth fret. Uh, ring finger is going to be on the D string of the seventh fret. Now, pinky, you can do this, is going to be on the ninth fret of the G. Thumb placement is everything, right? Yeah. If your thumb I, is wrong, it feels impossible. Well, that's where I have my thumb. I have oh, it just okay. underneath the line. Oh, so you don't have a line. But yeah, yeah. If you You're look at the, the skunk strike yeah, there? if you yeah, look yeah, at the yeah. back of your guitar, you can just imagine a line in the middle of your neck and just have it underneath. Yeah, show show them folks so what we're talking about. On the this back of my strat, I have a yeah. line down the back. Obviously, if you have a strat, it's going to be easier. Yeah. But um, you can just imagine a line, or if you get a little like pinstripe stuff, like the tape, you can just put it on the back, right in the middle. Yeah. And you can put it underneath. And you were just saying your thumb actually is creeping up on that kind of towards the, the edge of the fingerboard. They're yeah. Not quite. Yeah. Like, oh, there we go. Hey, right a little honest relicking. All right. <laughs> right there. Yeah. It's just, yeah. just underneath there. Yeah. So then we got. So from this D minor, you're going to hit that A and then the A flat. And then you swap to yeah. the. Yeah. That's brutal, bro. And then G minor, and then A minor, and again, right? We did this three times. Yeah. One more time, or B flat. Yeah, yeah. One more. Okay. And then from this and A minor goes to, a to B flat. B flat. To C, right? Yep. Then to a G. G minor. And then this is the first time A seven, right? back to the main riff again. So yeah. That is really cool. So the G minor is just good old fashioned G minor here, index finger from the third fret all the way across to the high E. You're gonna build an E minor underneath it with your ring finger on the fifth fret of the A, pinky on the fifth fret of the D. Slide that whole shaboing right up here. Boom, for A minor starting on the fifth fret. And then for the B flat, that comes, so you do that three times. And yeah. then on, on the third time after the A minor, you're hitting that B flat index finger straight across the sixth fret. And then you're building an E major underneath it where your ring finger is on the eighth fret of the A, pinky is on the eighth fret of the D, middle finger is on the seventh fret of the G. Yeah. And then slide that whole shaboing up to, up to the eighth fret, and that's a C major. And then back down to this G minor, and then to the fifth fret, the same exact grip as we did on the B flat and the C. This time it's on the fifth fret, making an A. And are you thinking of this as like A7? No, That's what I hear. Just, uh, just straight up A? Okay. Yep. Was there like a keyboard in there or something? Because I could have swore I heard. I'm not saying you're wrong. You not even that. Not even yeah. that. Um, 
Not in that song. On Crossroads, there was an organ I did on there. I got you. So, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Maybe what I'm hearing on that, you at some point, you like. Oh, I have it. a Leslie pedal actually yeah, yeah, through let's that hear whole that. thing. Yeah. So, it, um, so it was, it'll be like. Um, and that's the Electro Harmonic Celestial. Yeah. Very cool pedal. I just hold the chords. Okay. That's probably what I was hearing. And was that like a separate take that you did? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's very cool. So. But on that last one, I would. Um, yeah. And I'd like, instead of doing. I would um, arpeggio it. Yeah, and then let the pedal sort of yeah. do the, the work of bringing the intensity. Yeah. One of the things that's, and we touched on this right at the top, and this might be a good time to jump into it. Um, one of the things that, especially on this song, when you listen to it, um, you're going from, it starts off, you know, it almost sounds like you're playing with your thumb, like octaves. I was. He was. Yes, you I was. was. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So So where are you tucking your pick in here? There. Boom, all right. It's easy to yeah, yeah. So like that's why like you can barely see when I like all right, we gotta talk about that. Yeah. So, so your right hand, you're playing with your pick, and when you're, you, first of all, how are you hold your pick? I know it's kind of a dumb question, but it like makes this. a huge difference. So it's like, like that. With Can my, you show it to those folks like right this. there. Okay, so you're holding it with the point edge down, right? Yeah. You're using the point edge, and then when you're playing, you're are you down up, down up, down up all the time? Um, it depends. It's like, yeah. on the top strings, obviously, I probably wouldn't. It depends on what I'm doing. Uh huh. But most of the time it is always down up, down up. And I've noticed that you will tuck your pick in your hand and use your fingers. And then in that case, just a second ago, use your thumb pretty back and forth. It's not like... Yeah, also one thing with yeah. this, I don't ever pluck down with this. It's always still down up, down up. So down up, down up, down up, down up. So in other words, you're not doing a whole lot of raking with that? No, that's what I have my thumb for. Okay, gotcha. So I'll be like... Okay. So, um, I think we were just talking about Guthrie Govan a second ago, and I think there's a great lesson with him where he's talking about... Um, I think it's when he was playing a PRS, too. I can't remember. It's, mm. it's an older lesson. It's an old lesson. It's, it's an out there, yeah. But he was talking about how there's like a different EQ curve, like sound-wise, with mm. fingers. You know yeah. what I mean? There's like a different there sound. Is. yeah. Is that what's leading you to... There was more... It was more warmth in the... Mm -hmm. that. Compared to if I went... Totally. See? Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you, you do like this kind of Wes Montgomery thing yeah. at the top. Yep. And then from there, I heard you earlier when we were just getting set up, you played it down low like that. Can you play that? There was a bend that you did earlier on the low string. So it was, it was when you were like, and you were, you were bending down here. Um, when that was the double bend. Uh, yeah. I went, um... There's that little Bruce Lee thing again. Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening here, and while I'm just like looking at this, is that it's not just the fact that you're playing down here. And do you switch pickups when you get into that range too? Uh, most of the time in the start of the song, I'm on the, um, I call it the bell pickups, but it's the fourth position. Mm -hmm. But um, that's so the, between neck and middle. Right? Between the neck and the middle. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, if you're on a uh, like a Les Paul or anything, you can just go neck pickup. It's mm -hmm. pretty much the same. But um, 
that's where I come up with that part. Yeah. And then I did the... I just did the same one without the octave. But the big deal is that what I'm hearing that's like this EQ difference is at that point you were like just using your fingers when you're on this. This You're playing with your fingers, right? Yeah, I'm playing right? with my fingers on that part. Yeah, and yeah. then I get to the bottom part and I get to mm -hmm. the... Uh, and, and that's, that's pick. my pick. Yeah. So right there, so it's the same melody. Yep, same melody. Burst out of D minor. Yep. We're tuning D flat. Yep. Um, so D flat. Um, and because you're playing it in this part of the neck with your fingers, yep. and then this part of the neck with the pick, yep. when you're up here, it sounds kind of totally, it sounds like different voices. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, I didn't write any of it. I played it all like it was a backing track. And then I wrote some parts of which, I wrote that main. That melody, yeah. And then I added stuff to it, and then I put in the solos, and then the bridges and everything, so yeah. Well, so that was the thing I was going to ask you. You know, so, so you might be watching this and going, Nate, I love you, Taj, I'm amazed, but there's just no way I'm ever going to have those chops. A big, big, big thing to listen to, and we'll encourage you in just a second, but a big thing to wrap your mind around is that the song pulls in the listener and engages through these different yeah. voices and you're keeping the pentatonic fresh. It's always pentatonic scale. Yeah, but you're doing it with your right hand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a revelation. That ought to be nugget number four. Yeah. We got a lot of nuggets. Stay tuned. All right, so anyway, but that, that's really cool. So when you're doing that, did you guys like go, okay, we're doing this song, uh, verse one, we're playing it West Montgomery style. Did you map it out intentionally or is it just luck? Um, no, so we, we did the thing and we're like, I want it to go up, then come down again, and then back up, and then send it. So it was kind of where the whole, um, it was like a roller coaster, is mm -hmm. where it come in. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, there was a lot of just, the drums were playing and I'd play to it and I'd be like, I'll go, go like, louder. Mm -hmm. And then, um... And you played bass on this too, Yes, right? I did play yeah, bass yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, So you had to, did you guys just cut it as like you and a, a drummer just? Yeah, on the, yeah. on cruise it was just me and a drummer and then on Crossroads it was, it was I did everything. You I played drums, drums too? I did the drums, the nice. keyboard, the bass, the guitar. And the All seat. right, Stevie Wonder, I see yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, very cool. That's awesome. So uh, could you kind of walk us through, okay, then the, as the tune evolves, there is like this big shreddy moment kicking on the chorus pedal and... Maybe even like, I'd love for you, this might be a good time to even just mention some of your effects that you're using. Yeah, so um, I used the DD500 for my delay. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that was on your board last time yeah, too. Yeah, I, that's my favorite mm -hmm. one. I, I never actually touched it. Uh, this one's new. This is um, Joe Satriani's pedal. By the way, that is literally Joe Satriani gave you that pedal. Yes. Well, he didn't he give it to me, it. but someone bought <laughs> someone bought me it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, this is it. And he also gave me the guitar that he played that night as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. And um, and then I used this. This wasn't on here last time. Um, but it's a Schaefer replica. It just makes it sound better. So that's a cool pedal. That is, that is a... Um, a replica or a uh, a clone of the a clone of the um, Schaefer Tower that um, uh, Angus used to use, which was like a, one of the old school original wireless systems. Which, yeah. in terms of a wireless technology concept today, is gloriously inefficient. Yes, right. But the preamp that's inside of that thing was um, yeah. perfect. Yeah, that's cool. And then um, I have my Blue Sky Strymon, which I've had that on there for years. I love their stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I have a Super Chorus, um, which I've had that on mm -hmm. there for years as well. Uh, McPherson is my wah, and I've used that for years as well. Is that an Australian company? Uh, New Zealand, but New Zealand, pretty okay. much. Uh, and then Rick from Celestian gave me this uh, for me yeah, to the, try the out. Yeah, the South one. That is a great uh, sort of... A little tube screamery, but it's got its yeah. own voice. Yeah. And then I have my TS9X, mm -hmm. I think. And then, you know, we love Friedman and the uh, Friedman BEOD Deluxe. Oh, yeah, by the way, I don't know if you heard about it, but... Yeah. We do like Friedman. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then I have my BEOD Deluxe that I put on yesterday, actually. Yes, yes, yes. finally. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a... And that's a pretty metal, that's a pretty metal sound. Yeah, but I yeah. bring it back to how So fun fact, I, I don't know if the camera can get this. Are we on this channel right here? On I am on the blue channel. Okay, here. so your game is ah, about what, like eleven o'clock? Yeah, maybe? but this this channel is yeah. very is that the gain setting? That's the gain. So the gain is almost off. So oh, yeah. turn that off for a second. And then hit it, just let me hear it without it. Oh yeah, and then you kick it on. Now for fun, same thing, but turn the Schaefer off. That secret sauce. That is secret, secret sauce. sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, very cool. And so um, you kick in on cruise. Yeah. And we're full tilt boogie. Full, yep. And uh, and and so what were you at? Like on the tenth fret? You know, where whereabouts um, on the guitar are we at that point? I'm at the the D pentatonic scale, which is uh, tenth. Yeah. When you're playing, are you playing like a in, inside the classic pentatonic box with a little bit of variation, or are you thinking like all of the different forms of the pentatonic, or how do you just, where's your brain at when you're doing that, or are you just um, feel? Once again, a lot of muscle memory. Mm -hmm. I was like, I knew where I was supposed to be and what I could do, but mm -hmm. like a lot of it was just, a, was that main pentatonic, or I'd put like the, and you'd add like the extra, Yes. Let's, let's talk about that really quick. So you're you're playing the standard uh, pentatonic scale, but you're adding th this note right, and then and that note, and then that one too. Yeah. Yeah. So and a lot of things I would do there, like on a fast run, I think I do. I go, and that's the thing again yes so, yes yeah. i love that you know what that it reminds it's very jeff beck to me yeah but also have you checked out this guy jimmy herring uh no i haven't okay so he um he uh, used to play with a band called the uh, colonel bruce hampton and the aquarium rescue unit hmm. and uh, it's a long name yes yes but he is the john coltrane of electric guitar that's cool yeah 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 but and i think he would get it from like um like a little bit of D D jeff beck but also john mclaughlin from mm. Mahavishnu Orchestra and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, what Taj is doing here, he's basing. He, it's the, it's the good old D minor pentatonic box, but you're putting in, right? Yeah. So all that is, if we're thinking about this in D minor, and this would be a great way for you to spice this up. By the way, we've talked about this in chords and coffee, but he executes it awesomely, so it sounds better. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, it, it's it's going to be. 13, 12, 10, 13, 12, 10 on the B string. And all you're doing is you're adding, you're adding the ninth of that minor, right? Yeah. As well as the sixth, right? And so you're adding those two notes and then you just follow suit as you go down. You're gonna add that. So from 12, 10, nine, 12, 10, nine. And in that, I also used uh, harmonic minor, which is the- Oh uh, yeah. Oh, so you use that in like on the five chord of this song, or just? I used it a bit everywhere. So yep. you'd hear it, I'd be like. Nice. So I, I guess that would be adding that. Um, the, uh, the, the. Yeah, it'd be note. like a. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That, that little maneuver, that's just 10th fret on the high E, and then on the B string, uh, 13th fret, but then scoot it up to the 14th fret. Almost yeah. for release. Yeah. A little bit. It's yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. So, you're a fantastic player. Thank you. You really are. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm humbled watching you play, um, but also, um, you know, you are a real joy to be around. And Thank I mean you. that, like, you're genuinely, all of you guys are just super, just nice, down to earth, easy to talk to. Thank you. Um, I've been around 
some really fantastic guitar players. And I know that, and I'm saying this sort of delicately, is that sometimes you don't find those combination of things. Being an amazing player and then yeah. being an amazing individual, easy to get along with and still somehow attached to your humility, humanity yeah. and all those things. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, um, um, that's something I always have liked to keep. It's just uh, to know where I came from and what I was before I could play. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, as you're following people, I mean, in this day and age we're living in, I really feel like more and more people are attuned to, like, not only do I want to shop at this business or listen to this guy's records, but I want to support that person and what they stand for. And you guys stand for good stuff. Yeah. I really well, appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that. So, before we wrap this up, there's somebody watching this right now that's a kid. Yes. And Hopefully. there, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> well, there is. You're out there. I see you. Yeah. And so you're watching this and you're thinking, God, I would love to be able to do that. How would you encourage that kid? Um, it's, uh, I remember one of my good friends back home, he was like, there's three P, the three P's of guitar practice, practice, and practice. But um, a lot of it, is practice, but a lot of it comes from like some of the stuff that we said, just listen to the songs that like you want to learn. And if you listen to the songs over and over and over again, you will slowly understand what you're supposed to do and how it sounds. And um, yeah, a lot of things uh, that helped me with like um, playing by ear was um, I'd just put on a backing track in a key and I'd just like free solo to like a YouTube backing yeah, track. Yeah, it would be a YouTube backing yeah. track. Any color, any any color, any key you want. Yeah. Um, and you can just just do whatever you want to it. You can just solo over it. You can play the chords. It always helps when you're playing anything. So yeah. There's somebody out there that's been playing for a while, and maybe you know even a little older, and they feel like they're in a rut. How do you get out of the rut? Because we all get in a rut at some point as a guitar player. Um, one thing, like when I started learning Cliffs with Dover, I got in a rut with it and I couldn't learn anything. Mm -hmm. I let it go. I just stopped trying to play that song for like two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I come back to it and I could, and like I was still listening to the song over and over again. But I was like, I can't do it. So I'll just sit there. I'll just leave that song for a bit and I'll, um, do something else, like I'll learn some other songs. And then I learned that the, there was some songs that I have learned that was in that song as well. So I already knew how to play that. Mm -hmm. And then I could already know how it was supposed to be played. So yeah. That's really good. So you didn't beat yourself up no, about yeah, the fact no that you couldn't get it. Yeah, I just let it go for a while and then I come back to it. Yeah. It took me a month and a half to learn that song. So yeah. And that's, by the way, that's a month and a half. That was probably intensive. This is the guy that, you know, you're sitting in front of, you know, I don't know, like what you watch. Yeah, I was... Diners, oh, drive-ins no. and dives or something, you know, or... Yeah, yeah, what is it? It was Marty Schwartz. I used to watch him Marty Schwartz. Time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great guitar teacher. Yeah. 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 Like the original YouTube I've, guitar he teacher. He was actually like OG. the original yeah, yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Marty. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I love the fact that you didn't beat yourself up about it. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of times... Sometimes we, if we can't get something instantly, yeah. then we go, ah, not meant to be. Yeah. And so you came back to it. That's yeah. Great. And that was, it was, I mean, it was hard to be like, ah, oh, I can't do it. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'll just let it leave. I'll just leave it for a bit. And then I got uh, back on the guitar for like a week or, week or two after. And then I was like, oh, I can play it now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and how old were you then? I was nine when I learned that song. Okay, so now somebody's watching here and they're like, dude, I'm 79, all right? What would you say to that person that's out there that's picking up guitar, you know, um, you know, at, at a point where maybe they've already raised a family, you know, they, maybe they're even retired and they have time, but they feel like, yeah. oh man, it's, it's too late and we know that's not true. How There's, would you encourage that person? It's like you can really do anything if you put your mind to it and I know everybody's heard that before but it's like it's true like I've I've practiced for seven years and I'm still learning stuff now and um like there's it does it never stops when you like once you start playing you never stop learning stuff that's so, exactly yeah. right yeah so start right now now is yeah. the best time to now start. is the best time yeah that's awesome all right well you've been awesome I want to wrap this up thank you and I want to give 
you an opportunity to express some gratitude to someone in your life yeah. where you can say, hey, I just want to look at the camera and say thank you to whoever that would be. Uh, it would probably be my mum and my dad for um, doing all the hard work back home so I could come over here and do what I love to do. So yeah, it's uh, probably the main, the main cause. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you're a good man, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me, too. Absolutely. And I hope we get to do this again. For sure. And I'm going to tell you something. You may not know this. These folks on the other side of that lens, this is the most encouraging guitar community in the universe. Yep. And every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we get together. If you're watching this and you like this, share it. Hit the subscribe button. And we will see you next Saturday, 9 a.m., for another Chords and Coffee.